Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Community Journal. We're very happy that you've joined us, and uh, uh, we always like to see you tuning in. And we've yes, got we do. We do, and we have an interesting show for you today. Um, interesting weather also. Oh, I hope everyone is all right out there because, boy, was that wind blowing last night. It certainly <laughs> was. And uh, uh, we had um, an interesting uh, weather phenomenon. Um, it's called, I forget the technical name, but I don't think I've ever seen the barometer so low. Yes, you were um, talking about that. Yeah, it was down uh, below 29. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that in a long, long time. So you know that that is a deep depression, two weather systems coming together, and re really that's why we got all the wind. And uh, we ah. have, Yeah, that's why we got all the wind. So we hope everybody's okay out there. And uh, hey, that's, uh, that's New England and especially Cape Cod. Yes, especially this. To bring us up to date, uh, Emily Carter uh, sat down with uh, Jennifer Pickett. The two of them are going to bring us up to date as to what's going on at the Brooks Library. So let's take a look. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Carter. I'm the staff at the Brooks Free Library, and today I'm here with Jennifer Pickett, our reference librarian, to talk about some of the programs we have coming up in November. We've got some great things on the table. I know Climate Change Week just happened, but we really wanted to bring that conversation further into the year. So to do that, we're going to start things off by having a new programming Many of you might be familiar with our music series, with our movie matinees that we had. Well, this one we're calling Extreme Weather, and the first one is going to be Extreme Weather, Tornadoes with Phil Burt. So we did have a tornado come through here in July. I know a lot of us were impacted. This is the start of looking back on that and understanding of why do these happen, um, you know, where do they come from, and Phil's going to answer some of your questions in a Q&A on it. But I'm going to turn this over to Jennifer so she can talk a little bit more about the program and, you know, Phil's background. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jennifer Pickett, reference librarian at the Brooks Free Library. We are really, really excited to have Phil Burt, who runs CapeCodWeather.net, which is a local Cape Cod weather site that a lot of us use on a daily basis. He's a great forecaster, great meteorologist. We are really excited to have him come and talk about the scientific aspects of what happened, it happened, how it works, if it's going to happen again, all those kind of questions. He's going to do a presentation. We're really excited. He's, he's using photos from the event that we're, we're giving to him. Um, he's going to be showing the line of the tornado that came by, and he's going to be answering a lot of questions. So, I know a lot of us had a lot of questions when this happened, so this is the opportunity to, to ask a real expert about this, um, this event that so rarely happens on Cape Cod. Um, we've been trying to put this together for a couple of months now. Yeah. It's been difficult. Um, <laughs> we had hurricane season, so meteorologists mm -hmm. have been pretty busy. Mm -hmm. um, but we're really excited to have Phil specifically to talk about tornadoes. And so again, this event is going to be Thursday night, November 14th at 6 p.m. It's really targeted for all ages. It's totally okay to bring kids. Um, I think he's going to be entertaining. He's going to do a presentation, and there's going to be a lot of time for question and answer. So all of you with lingering questions about what happened and why <laughs> this tornado on Cape Cod happened, please come. And then we're excited about the community conversations program that we're going to have the next week, which Emily's going to talk a little bit about. Yeah. And that's going to be the next Thursday, November 21st at 2 p.m. All right. So community conversations. This is going to be a creative follow-up to the discussion that Phil starts. And what it is is... We're inviting you to come into the library um, and just sit down and work with your fellow community members to address some of these bigger questions on like, what could we have done better? What did we do well this time? That way, I know part of processing is talking about things that go on. So this is a way for you to connect with people, maybe outside your friend group, outside your neighborhood, who may have had a similar experience during the tornado or had a totally different one. And you could share your insights and learn something from them. So if you come, we have coffee. Um, I will try and bring snacks as well. This is not me bribing you, but, <laughs> but it kind of is. So please definitely consider coming. Um, you don't have to be like artsy or anything to come here. It's not, we're not going to be judging work or, or judging your 
thoughts or anything that you put out there. It's mostly so you can have a place to express yourself with other people. And we'll have more details on that as we go forward. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to say, though, actually, before all of this, if you do have pictures of the tornado that you want to submit for Phil to use, um, if you email them to brooksfreelibrary at clamsnet.org with the subject line tornado photos or tornado pics, if you email those to us before October 20th, we'll get them to fill. It just needs to have that street address that's really important so he can plot the path that this tornado took. So if you, again, if you have any pictures of the damage to trees, roads, um, structures, please forward them to us if you'd like and we'd be happy to pass them on. And again, the deadline for that is October 20th and it absolutely does need the street address. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I think there was a lot more damage that people are discovering just this yeah. weekend. I went for some walks in Conservation Area in Harwich and Chatham, and I hadn't been to those places in a while, and I couldn't believe the trees that were down in some of them. So I think there's a lot of damage out there. It wasn't just the path of the tornado. That's the question that yeah. I have because um, I live nearby, but I wasn't in the path of tornado, but I had a lot of damage in my yard as well. So I'm curious as to how that all works. Um, the right. damage that I've seen that wasn't in the path of the tornado was, was pretty severe. So they call it straight line winds, but right. I don't really know what that means. Yeah, and so know. that's one of those things that we definitely need to find out, like, what is it with the tornado? We all know about hurricanes and how big yeah. they are, and they go around in a circle, and there's a wide... Um, you know, area, but tornadoes are supposed to be this localized thing, but it seemed like there were these little odd patches of winds that did a lot of damage mm -hmm. around town. So that's kind of one of my questions. Um, and I'm also just excited about the community conversations discussion because everybody's got their tornado story, and we've heard a lot of them here mm -hmm. at the library, and it's very interesting. I mean, it's from being at Ground Zero, working that yeah. day. We had yeah, a very different experience. I run into a lot of people who completely ignored it, and it barely affected them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it just happened so suddenly. It was very different than any other storm that we've had where we knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. This thing happened really suddenly in the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer, and it was a bit traumatic for a lot of people. So the community discussion is like the chance for you to get together with other members of the community and share your story and talk about what happened and talk about were you prepared? How did you react? How would you do it better the next time? What can we do better the next time? Um, it's about being prepared for a disaster and also just processing the event. I feel like this thing happened in the middle of the summer and we're all so busy and we all just kind of moved on and did what we needed to do. And, but it's been a few months now, so maybe people still have a lot of things they want to talk about. So community conversations, that's going to be Thursday, the 21st at 2 p.m. We'd really like people to sign up for that. We're actually requiring registration for yeah. that. Yep. It's important just so we get an idea of how many people are going to show up. So please go to the website, brooksfreelibrary.org, or you could give us a call at the library. Let me not get the phone. 508-430-756. Uh, <laughs> Two. Two. Um, <laughs> call us at the library and let us know you want to register for that. And it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's, we're going to have snacks and we're really going to make it a nice environment, yeah. casual, you know, discussion, not really a presentation, just an opportunity for people to get together and talk about things. And we hope that that goes well. Definitely. Mm -hmm. but, all right, so that's what's coming at the, up in November. Um, you can take a look at our Again, it's events. It's on that red ribbon on brooksfreelibrary.org. And you can have a whole calendar to view, you can change it to a list view, whatever you prefer to look at. But that's where you can find what's coming up, where you can sign up. Um, again, to sign up, it's clicking that little hand and pen icon on the bottom of the event that's listed on the day. Or you can fill out your name, your email address, your phone. It will send you a reminder to let you know that a program is coming up that you've registered for. So that's always a nice feature that I've enjoyed mm -hmm. in the past, so I remember. But. Um, yeah, that's it for November. We'll be back again later with some more library information. Thank yep. you. Thank you. And we thank Emily and Jennifer for bringing us up to date. Yes, as always, very busy at the Brooks Free Library. Uh, it's, it certainly is. They, they, you know, we've said it many, many times. Mm -hmm. They do such a great job. And uh, for everybody, for young, old, and everything in between. You got yes, it. They really do. Um, speaking of a good job, we know that Cape Cod Healthcare. Uh, is sponsoring a, a, a blood drive, and we've announced this several times, but we can't stress enough uh, how important a blood drive here on Cape Cod is. Every pint that is uh, given for this blood drive stays right here on the 
And we just remind you again, it's Monday, October 28th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, right here at the Community Center, 100 Oak Street. Uh, and if you do give blood, you will get a complimentary gift card uh, for Cumberland Farms. So that's a good deal. It certainly is. Really nice. And uh, if you need more information, I can give you a website. It's www.capecodhealth.org forward slash give dash blood. Or it's easier if you just use the phone. 508-862-5663. Uh, <coughs> That's 508-862-5663. And again, what's donated here stays here. And that's so important. It sure is. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead Eileen. Uh, you, I like right. that poster. Yes, absolutely. It's coming, folks. The Halloween party here at the Howard Community Center will be two weeks from today. Thursday, October 31st, it will begin at 4.30. There'll be trick-or-treating, there'll be food, there'll be crafts, there'll be a parade, and there'll be prizes. A safe Halloween celebration, free and fun for all. And just to remind you, the boutique for Halloween costumes will be held this Friday, October 18th, from 5 to 8 p.m. right here at the Howard Community Center. Wow, that's... Uh Always a great thing every single year. Yes, it is, uh, and know. we've we've been here for it. Oh, and it's, it's wonderful. Oh, it, it is. Really it's, is. It, they do such a wonderful job here. Yeah, they, they really do. do. They really do. Well, our next uh, spot uh, today, uh, we're going to have the Council on Aging update. Uh, Emily Mitchell and uh, sat down with Dinah uh, to bring us up to date. So let's take a look at that right now. Hello. I'm here with Emily Mitchell of the Harwich Council on Aging, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about some of special special programs that are going on this month. Welcome. Thank you, Emily. Dinah. Nice Appreciate to see it. you. Yes, it's good to see you. Good to be here. Um, so it's hard to believe that we're almost into November. Um, oh, no. I know it, but we do have some <laughs> On November 6th, which is a Wednesday, we are doing an event called Stars for Our Heroes. And it's a way of repurposing American flags that can no longer be flown. So what folks do is they come in and they cut out the stars. I actually have a little example right here that I don't know if it's good to see on camera. Mm. Um, but it's a way of cutting out the stars. Mm. And then there's a little message put in the back. And then they will be distributed to military personnel and veterans on Veterans Day and in other events throughout the month. Um, so it's a, a nice way to honor our veterans and to repurpose flags that can't be flown. Mm. So we're excited to do that. We're partnering with the veterans agent to put this program okay. on. We'll be providing all the supplies that you need to do it. And it's kind of just a drop-in. So you can come in, you can cut out stars for 15 minutes, or you can stay for the full hour and a half. Um, so we're trying to, to get a good number cut out so we have them to distribute. So people bring their own flags? No, we will provide the flags as well. You provide the flags? Yes. If a person has a flag that they would like to repurpose, Certainly would they can that bring be welcome? Most definitely. Okay. Um, so we are a location here at the community center for people to um, bring in their flags that can no longer be mm -hmm. flown. So we do have a supply of them. Okay. But absolutely, if folks have them at home, um, we'd love for them to bring them in. Okay. I think I was saying to you that I had seen what looked like a drop box yes. for uh flags that are no longer needed or are in good shape. So. Exactly. If you walk in the COA <laughs> side entrance to the building, actually, you'll see that box pretty much right in front of you. So okay. um, that's always there year round okay. for folks if they want to, to properly get rid of the flag. But this is really a group activity. Yes. And you'll be able to help them figure out how to do it neatly. So. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Shawnee, who works um, in the veteran, she's one of the veterans agents. Mm -hmm. This is a project she really does year round. Mm. Um, so it's a partnership with her. So she's excited that we're doing oh, it here. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Great. Yes. Um, and then a little bit later in the month on November 19th, which is a Tuesday, we're going to do a talk on aging in place. So I'll be there. Um, as one of the facilitators, and then Sue Giselle, the town nurse, mm -hmm. and Susanna Keith, our outreach worker, are going to facilitate this roundtable discussion on what it means to age in your home. Um, so what activities mm. are beneficial to you? Mm. What plans should you have in place? What kind of documents do you need mm -hmm. um, to make sure that your wishes are, are known and respected? Mm -hmm. So it'll be a good conversation. It's supposed to be a part one, and then a part two program, we're going to have attorneys come in 
and give a talk on what's the difference between guardianship and healthcare proxy and power of attorney and those types of things. That will be a different event. A different event, probably okay. in January. So this I is um, an introduction to the topic <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and just kind of a discussion, a place for questions, mm -hmm. and then we'll get into some of the nitty gritty legal details um, uh -huh. in a few months. I see, okay. Yes. So, so many people uh, do want to, in fact, or hope that they will be able to stay in their home. Exactly. And such an event and uh, information could help them figure out how to do that safely. Most definitely. And we yeah. just have a wealth of resources at the COA that supports people in doing that. Mm. And so we're just excited to make sure people know, know what we have to offer and what the community has to offer. So okay. we're excited about it. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate Sounds it. That's great. And yes. Welcome to almost November. Oh my gosh, it's hard to believe, but <laughs> okay. it'll be enjoyable. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Dinah. This is Dinah Lane for Harwich Channel 18. Thank you so much. And thanks to Emily. Um, yes, lots going yeah, on at the COA of, as well. Yeah, Emily does a wonderful job. Oh, and, she uh, does. Yeah, she yeah. really does. And uh, okay, you have some interesting ones there. I do. I have lots of things to tell you about today. So yeah. get out your paper and pencil, because here I go. The Cape Cod Chamber with Matthew Sinto as the music director will be presenting Haydn the Pirate in collaboration with the Witta Pirate Museum on Sunday, October 20th at 3 p.m. at the Pilgrim Church here in Harwichport. There will be a pre-concert talk at 2.15 p.m. and tickets are $30 in advance or $35 at the door. Children and students are free. So if you're interested in getting tickets, please call 508-432-1668. There's also a website and I will tell you what it is. www.apecod.com chamberorchestra.org. And again, the phone number is 508-432-1668. And you know, the program is featuring some great classical oh, music. Oh, it and, is. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you for bringing that yeah, up, Jack. it really is. Um, and what a great place to listen to oh, music. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, good acoustics be, there. That should be a good take. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what else? All right. Well, as I mentioned before, Halloween <laughs> is coming, guys. Friends of the South Harwich Meeting House present Halloween Unhinged, a unique concert experience. On October 26th, it will be at 7.30 p.m. Halloween is not just for kids anymore. At 2 p.m., you can bring your carved pumpkin for judging. Grand Pumpkin Honor Parade will be held during the concert itself. Meet their historic guests, ghosts, excuse me, on tours through the cemetery by lantern light beginning at 6 p.m. This concert will be featuring the talents of James Byrne and Joseph Marchio. There will be music, vocals, and special effects. Oh boy. Yes. One show only. Don't miss out. $20 <coughs> in advance at Halloween Unhinged dot brown paper tickets dot com or you can get them at the door. Again, Halloween Unhinged dot brown paper tickets dot com or at the door. And the South Harwich Meeting House is at 270 Chatham Road in South Harwich. Uh, very good. The interesting talk that's going to be taking place uh, on November 2nd. Mm. Um, this is Outer Cape Storms and ship Shipwrecks Walk Saturday. This is uh, this is a rather interesting one. It's co-sponsored by the Harwich Conservation Trust and the East Ham Conservation Foundation. You can join. You'll join uh, historian and author Don Wilding on an interactive uh, guided walk or an interpreted guided walk, Nosset Light Beach to the Coast Guard Beach on Saturday, November second, to explore the coastal storms, historic shipwrecks and daring rescues along the outer beach of Cape Cod. Travel across more than three centuries, so they're going to take in a lot of history with this, and um, it should be quite interesting. Now the cost is $15, the time is 10 a.m. to noon, and it's Saturday, November 2nd. The rain date is Sunday, November 3rd, and uh, the walk distance is one and a half miles, mostly in beach and sand. So. You have to be aware of that before you uh, uh, 
uh, goal, but uh, should be a very interesting. It sounds uh, wonderful. Walk and talk. Oh. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, we amazing. have a daughter that would really, really love that. Oh, it, yeah. She's into she shipwrecks and pirates. Is she and, ever? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that sounds really good. So again, that's Saturday, November second. Rain date, November third. Yes, and I would wear very good walking beat shoes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, senior citizens, you are invited to enjoy a Thanksgiving turkey dinner on Thursday, November 14th, 2019 at 4 p.m. at Monomoy Regional High School, 75 Oak Road, Harwich. Please RSVP 508-815-5849. That's 508-815-5849. The seating is limited, compliments of the Monomoy Regional High School Wellness Department. Mm. We gather together to celebrate the season. What a nice thing that, to do. Isn't that nice? That's, that's really, lovely. That's really very, yeah. very nice. Yeah, okay. Child's Play, the final tour. Ooh, that well, sounds interesting. Yeah, it sure does. Bob Weiser, the Cranfest music director, sat down with Dinah to tell us about this. Mm. R rather intriguing. I, I want to see what this is about. Perhaps we should listen up and stop talking. I think we should. <laughs> Let's take a look. Hello. I'm here with Bob Weiser. Delighted to be talking with him about Child's Play, the final tour, which is about to come to Harwich on November 21st. Bob, welcome. So great to have you here. This sounds like an amazing, amazing concert. I was so excited to read about it. It's the second time we brought this troupe to Harwich. And the reason we're doing a repeat is because it's the final tour. Uh -huh. After 30 plus years, this group of musicians, mm. some of whom probably weren't born when the first tour went out on the road. Right, right. Bob Childs is a violin maker in Cambridge mm -hmm. and an extraordinary number of very talented performers play violins that he made. And by I, hand, yeah. the old-fashioned way. You know, he may not be Stradivari, but he makes pretty nice violins. Right, and, and I understand that um, uh, a lot of them are going to be playing in this concert, and, well, all as well the, as him. All of the right? violins that are going to be played in the concert were made by him, yes. and the violas. Yes, oh. Um, He builds them that big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it sounds like a grand exposition of, of fiddle music. Well, what they've tried to do from the outset is to choose from a wide variety of traditions on mm -hmm. the fiddle. So there's a lot of Irish-oriented music, but there's also Scottish and Cape mm -hmm. Breton style mm -hmm. and Appalachian style and you know, just uh, Scandinavian fiddle styles. Mm -hmm. All manner of fiddle traditions are explored mm -hmm. by the troupe. And they have a rhythm section to support them. Uh -huh. There are a couple of Irish step dancers who are part of the cast. Yes, the guest a little bit of dance thrown in. Right, always, uh, Kevin Doyle excellent. and Maureen Berry, award-winning mm -hmm. uh, Irish dancers. Uh, Karen is the guest vocalist this year, as she was three years ago. Mm. She sometimes tours with them. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Afa Donovan, who just won the Americana Music Award for Best Group with her group, I'm with her, mm -hmm. she's performing in the New York performances, which you see, but I don't think she's coming to Harwich. Uh -huh. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> well, we'll miss her, but I'm sure it's going to be fabulous. How many performers are there in all in this group? There are about two dozen on stage, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, mm -hmm. I think, it's, I think it's dinner for 27 or 28 altogether, mm -hmm. um, include the crew. Mm -hmm. And this is a self-contained program. They'll be performing in New York City, in Boston, mm -hmm. in Portland, Maine, in Brattleboro, and on Cape Cod. And they've performed all over the world over the course of these 30 years mm -hmm. and uh, are quite high -rated. And the show is fun. Mm -hmm. The show touches on so many styles. You know, one of the lead violin players is Bonnie Buick, who's uh, a violinist in the Boston Symphony. Yes. And they've got the uh, all champion, Sheila Falls, 
and they've got Katie McNally, the young uh, Scottish fiddler, um, who's the New England fiddle champion. Mm -hmm. And they've got Hanukkah Castle, who was the U.S. Scottish fiddle champion a, a few a decade or so mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a remarkable collection of brilliant players. Uh, Ellen Gawler, who is the founder of the Maine Fiddle Camp, where so many fine traditional uh, fiddle players have been exposed to the music and mm -hmm. started their careers is part of the cast. Uh -huh. Her daughter is going to do a couple of dance numbers. Oh, great. Um, it's, uh, it's a family thing. It's, uh, it's, it's a great thing to bring your kids to if they're interested already in violin and if they're not interested, maybe a way to get them interested. Mm -hmm. And It sounds inspiring. It really does. It sounds absolutely amazing. A whole evening. I'm, in, I'm always of, inspired by great music yeah. uh, of a v wide variety of right. styles. And this is just one of the many things yeah. that we're able to bring to Harwich. Right. This is going to take place in the auditorium at the Montemoy Regional High School. Okay. And which the, date, is, the date is? It's Thursday, November 21st. Okay. It's the week before Thanksgiving for people who might be nervous about a Thursday Excellent. in November and the date's in the 20s. Yep. It's the 21st, the week before Thanksgiving. Okay. At 7.30 p.m. Yeah, sounds like good timing. Plenty of free parking. Mm. Uh, the Montemoy High School Auditorium is uh, fully compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act, mm -hmm. meaning that people who are disabled in some way or other are able to take in the music and mm -hmm. not be limited, as many uh, older venues are. Right. The seating is comfortable. The, s the acoustics are great in the mm. auditorium. Mm. It is a first-class facility. This is a world-class performance. Yes. And it's a great chance to see what is possible here in our community. Mm -hmm. We, you know, the Harwich Cranberry Festival, of which I'm the music director, uh, we present concerts out in the field behind the community center. Mm -hmm. We also present concerts in the courtyard at the cultural center. Right. which is the former middle school and in the auditorium at the Cultural Center. Mm -hmm. But Monomoy is the uh, really great the, space. the great yep. space in yep. our community. Yep. Okay. And uh, ticket prices are uh, uh, varying? From yep. Uh, there are tickets at $30, tickets mm -hmm. at $75, mm. uh, and several ranges in between. In between. Okay. Uh, and that base is based on where people are sitting and... Sections yep. of the Every theater. seat in the Montemoy Regional High School Auditorium is a reserved seat. Mm -hmm. So the sooner you buy your tickets, the more selection of seats you have. Okay. And we hope that people will go to the site at Brown Paper Tickets. You can call mm -hmm. them. Uh, telephone is 800-838-3006. Okay. And Brown Paper Tickets services callers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. and you can, or you can order them online. Uh, there's a small service fee, but tickets are 30 50 55 and $75. Okay. okay. And every seat in the house is a good one. Okay. And I understand you've been planning this for quite a long time. I know you said you've been planning it for a year. This has been in the planning yep. cycle for over a year. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. The, uh, well, think about what it would take. Understandably, because they must be so 25 popular. to 30 yeah. musicians who right. work. Right. These are all professional yeah. musicians yeah, who work course. in other formations. So right. they have to plan, and that's part of the reason it's the final tour, mm. because bringing together all of these musicians at one time on a two or three week tour around the Northeast or around the country right. or to Europe, all of which they've done over the 30 right. odd years, it's the logistics of that are, right. are, are uh, Monumental. And this is part of a tight yeah. tour schedule for them because yeah. they're going right from one to another. One tour. night only. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds absolutely fabulous. Now, Bob Childs is going to be conducting? Uh, he is a part of the troupe. Uh -huh. he's a, I see. He he's plays. A, he is a fiddle player himself. And he leads and he, to some extent. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know how to describe it. Or is it, it it's not a conductor. It's more like a know, Ouija board. But it's a... Uh, <laughs> He will introduce some yeah. of the songs, and Karen Casey will introduce some of the songs. I see. Other okay. members of the cast will introduce some of the songs. Right. It's really it's, a community. Yeah, it's a yeah, uh, musicians. It, it's it's really uh, it's really like a family on stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
a very large family mm, with a lot large. of violence. Right, right. <laughs> and a few dancers. And a few dancers. Okay. Well, excellent. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you. And uh, I'm so thrilled about this. I can't wait to go. I and I hope we'll see, see you at the concert. Yep. I hope we'll see you at the concert. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This is Diane Harwich, Channel 18. Thank you so much. Wow. Well, oh Does boy. that sound interesting, huh? Child's Play, the final tour. And uh, that sounds really interesting. It does. Thursday, November 21st at 7.30 p.m. at the School Auditorium. And, uh, uh, you know, again, a uh, great place for a concert. Oh, wonderful and, um, acoustic show. Yeah. And this is, uh, you know, this is the last time it's going to be done. I so, know. Uh, so if you're interested. Let me give go, you the number again yes. just in case you missed it. It's 800-838-3006. And they'll be calling brown paper tickets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, wow. I, I guess there's tiers of ticket prices. So. Yeah, I guess there yeah. are. Yeah, and every seat is reserved. So yes. uh, the quicker you move, the better seat you get. There you go. Yeah, wow. Okay, what do you have, Eileen? Well, speaking. On. Yeah. <laughs> November 30th is going to be a very exciting day at the Cultural Center. So get out your pen and paper if you think you might be interested in what's going on. There's several different things, so I will explain them to you. Um, it will be Shop Small Saturday on November 30th, and from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. there will be a bazaar, a holiday bazaar, and you are invited to be part of the special event by exploring the incredible artwork of local artists in painting, photography, sculpture, mixed media, handmade jewelry, and more. This will be the perfect opportunity with your community, support local artists, and shop small. Now, if you happen to be one of those artists and you would like more information on reserving a table to vend in the Indoor Market Bazaar, you can contact Carolyn Carey at 508-430 7568. And she also has a website, C Carey, C A R E Y, at town.harwich.ma.us. Now, if you are interested in renting a table and being a vendor, they are only $20 to rent. And you can sell your crafts and creations at this November 30th holiday bazaar. The event itself is scheduled, as I mentioned, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., but setup time will be at 7 a.m. Now, the same day, <laughs> the same place, oh boy. there's going to be a holiday wreath decorating workshop, obviously in a separate area at the Cultural Center. Pre-registration discount of $10 off will be yours if you register before November 25th. The ticket price at the door is $50. Um, each person will be provided a double-faced balsam 12-inch drums, gift boxes, and so forth. Laura will guide each person in a fun, creative way on how to embellish and adorn their own wreaths while fostering their own creative flair. Materials for attaching items such as wire, shears, wooded picks, scissors, floral tape will be provided. And this brings me back to my days in the garden club. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I had a bag that had wire shears, wooded yep. picks, scissors, Absolutely. and floral tape <laughs> that I would take with me at yep. the holiday time when we made things. You know, there is just one example of, of how wonderful that cultural center oh, is. Oh, I know. Yes. Thank you for the, saying that. To have all of those things going on, mm -hmm. and nobody's going to be in anybody's way mm -hmm. um, because it, it's just a perfect, it, you know, it's perfectly suitable. It is. Yeah, yeah. And Carolyn Carey is the point person on that. Absolutely. Again, her phone number is 508-430-7568 if you have any questions or you want to rent a table and Very be a vendor. Good. Well, folks, that is our show for this week. We really appreciate you tuning us in. On behalf of all of us here at Channel 18, we thank you. And please take advantage of everything going on around town. We're into the holiday season, guys, as you can tell from our announcements. So uh, please take care and take advantage. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.